with the bicentennial of Greece coming up, it was so great to hear Senator Menendez quote Lord Byron. And uh, I think one day when we're celebrating another major milestone in Greece, we will be celebrating Senator Menendez as a Philhellene on the level of Lord Byron. But uh, now going from Philhellene to Hellenes, uh, we also had great heroines of the 1821, and I think in 2021, we get to celebrate uh, Greek-American women who are leading the charge in a new era of Greek-American relations, and that's why I'm thrilled to welcome uh, Congresswoman Dina Titus, uh, who is still right now the only Greek-American woman in the U.S. Congress, but will shortly be joined by Nicole Maliotakis and the National Security Advisor to the Prime Minister, Mr. Thanos Dokos, uh, who also has just recently released a must-read uh, with, uh, with parliamentarian uh, Mr. Sirikos, who was on before, the Atlas of Greco-Turkish uh, Relations, uh, a comprehensive look that uh, we will be circulating all across the U.S. policy establishment. Congresswoman, uh, I know you're in the middle of stimulus negotiations, trying to keep the, the country from going into further uh, economic damage and try to get us over the corona hump. Um, you know, for everyone to know, since we now officially have a president-elect and vice president-elect after the Electoral College, Congresswoman Titus, you were the first member of Congress from an early primary state that endorsed Joe Biden. Uh, so you got him, a, and Nevada was kind of the beginning of his comeback because he overperformed yes, what people thought. And uh, frankly, it was your county, right, that uh, that put him over the top in in, in Nevada. So congratulations on the big win. Uh, we will always remember if it wasn't for a Greek American woman, we'll tell him he he, he didn't get elected. <laughs> but. Uh, Congresswoman, as we prepare for the incoming Biden administration, we'll discuss that in a little bit. Uh, this last Congress was quite eventful, and you were in the middle of all of it. Uh, there was the East Med Act that we already discussed. There was the sanctions that everybody's talking about. Uh, there was Hagia Sophia, and you led an amendment uh, to 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 keep Turkey or to hold Turkey to account for its uh, outrageous version of Hagia Sophia. How do you think we should remember the 116th Congress? Well, thank you, Indy, for putting us together. It's such an important time for this dialogue, and I'm delighted to be part of it and very honored to be on the, uh, the program with Mr. Doka. So thank you for having us. You know, we finished strong in this last Congress. Uh, President Trump put the sanctions on Turkey, which was a good thing. But you've got to remember that uh, that only came after he was pushed by Congress to do that. We had uh, called for the passage of those cats uh, sanctions much earlier and had passed legislation to force that. He just never got around to it. And it was only after we put it in the NDAA that has just passed with the overwhelming majority. So it's veto proof. Uh, we can override any veto that he has been forced to do it. So that's a strong ending, but it was really Congress that played the key role in doing that. You mentioned a couple of other things and I just will highlight them because they represent some of the best of bipartisan action by Congress. We need to look for areas where we can cooperate across partisan lines and our dealings with uh, Greece have been examples of that. It was a bipartisan issue when we voted to hold Turkey accountable uh, with the, on the transfer of F-35s from Russia. We wanted sanctions on that and wanted that uh, not to occur and there would be some consequences for it. You mentioned my amendment on Hagia Sophia. That was certainly very important to all Greeks here and abroad around the world, as well as just being such a fabulous cultural site to preserve uh, for future generations. And we had to say to the State Department, you've got to take this seriously. And we do not approve of Turkey turning this uh, our church into uh, a mosque and or the, it stay, at least should stay 
a museum. Uh, besides holding Turkey accountable, some of the things we did, we took a stronger approach to the Middle Eastern Mediterranean and we renewed our strength with the partners Greece, uh, Cyprus, and Israel in that new Eastern Mediterranean Security and Energy Partnership. That bill has allows for new security assistance. It lifts the arms embargo off of Cyprus and it established uh, a new US Eastern Mediterranean Center for dealing with energy development. So I'd say we did pretty well in this Congress and I'm happy to have been part of that. And the Greek uh, caucus has been very active. And again, I stress the bipartisan nature of it. Yeah, we just, the 116th set uh, certainly a high bar, and hopefully we can get there in the 117th. Before Mr. Douglas, before we get to the, the the Biden administration, let's talk about like a little bit of a revolution in in Greek foreign policy. You're setting up a national security council uh, for the first time, trying to kind of create a national security culture as much as just a, a process. How do you see? Uh, as Mr. Ellis noted earlier, sometimes in Greece, they, you know, historically in Greece and Cyprus and elsewhere in Europe, they really don't get the, the significance of the Congress. It seems uh, that that has changed. We saw Senator Menendez's trip, for example, what a big deal uh, it, it uh, was in Greece. How do you see your new National Security Council and process dealing with Congress? Well, first of all, it's it's a privilege to be part of this conversation, and thank you for the opportunity. Yes, we're trying to create something different, something that exists in a number of countries for many years, especially the U.S. And this is one of the models. You know, I was looking forward uh, to travel to the U.S. and and talk to my counterparts there, and see how the National Security Council is working. What is its uh, cooperation with other important players in the national security architecture? Unfortunately, I had to do this uh, through Skype and, and Zoom, uh, which is, is not the real thing. So I'm looking forward when circumstances allow uh, to have a number of physical meetings and find out and, and, and benefit from the uh, American experience also from, from other countries like the UK, uh, France and, and, and other countries that have similar uh, institutions. Um, Congress, uh, well, I think we discovered its its importance. Uh, we knew it was an important actor in U.S. Uh, foreign and, of course, domestic policy. Uh, but in, in a difficult and unusual administration, let me uh, put it this way, uh, Congress has been a, an important balancing factor and actor. Uh, so many of us in, in Europe have realized it's uh, central role in, in, in many aspects of, of U.S. foreign policy. We're certainly looking forward to working with Congress, as a number of previous speakers have, have said, to strengthen the already uh, excellent relationship between the U.S. Uh, and, and Greece. Um, someone mentioned, said that the sky is the limit. Uh, I certainly agree with that. There's so much we can accomplish working with the U.S., but also uh, with a number of like-minded actors in our part of the world, the Eastern Mediterranean, countries like uh, Cyprus, Israel, Egypt, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, and others, and create a, an axis of stability, countries that would like to have a stable region, cooperate with each other to a mutual benefit. This is Greece's vision, and we're looking forward to work with the U.S. in implementing this. Now let's move on to the incoming Biden administration. Congresswoman, you were there from the beginning. Uh, even in the general election, you were one of his top surrogates, the Greek Americans. Uh, what do you look for? You know, and you also know a lot of the incoming players. You've dealt with them from from the time uh, you were in Congress during the Obama administration. Do you believe that the the historically improved bilateral relationships between Greece and U.S., Cyprus and the U.S. are going to continue uh, under and maybe even get stronger under the Biden administration. Well, I think they will get stronger and for a number of reasons. You know, they laugh and call him Joe Bidenopoulos because he has such a long time, strong standing and relationship with Greece. And I think you'll see that 
just uh, enhanced under his administration. You know, he's very familiar with Greece and with Cyprus. He's the only vice president who's visited there. He's called Turkey out on a number of issues in the past. He called Turkey out, the only one of the candidates, uh, certainly this current president didn't, on the Hagia uh, Sophia issue. He's called for the opening of the uh, seminary. Uh, he has opposed and looked for solutions for the Cyprus, the occupa Turkish occupation of Cyprus. He's appointed, as you mentioned, Indy, people to his cabinet. You see Tony Blinken as the new Secretary of State, who also have a long history uh, and a lot of knowledge about this area and a real commitment to it. Another thing that you mentioned, and uh, we just heard about the importance of the Congress, is that Joe Biden has been in the Congress. He was on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I serve on the Foreign Relations Committee too, and know that we can be a stronger partner with the administration uh, if we if people realize what an asset we can be. Certainly the Trump administration did not, but the Biden administration will. And I look forward to that. I'm also on the European subcommittee. And I think there's a lot we can do working together to strengthen our hand in this part of the world. Also, you mentioned how uh, strategically placed Greece is and the geopolitical power that it has with people around it, whether it is Israel or Cyprus. You know, there's a lot we can do there economically, especially in the fields of energy, as well as politically, militarily. So that, I believe, will uh, move forward. And a final thing is that Joe Biden has a real commitment to show our power through our example, not to use power as an example. And so he will restore the State Department. That has just been pretty much devastated under this current administration. A lot of positions not appointed, funding attempted to be cut, uh, diplomacy not being put at the foreground. Instead, it's all been transactional. So it will be a whole different approach from the State Department that I also think bodes well for us and Greek-U.S. Uh, relations. You know, Mr. Dokos, I'm sure you have expectations uh, and we've seen it in the press. We've seen it from other speakers and from statements for the, uh, from uh, Prime Minister Mitsotakis. What do you think are you know, kind of the most direct speaking fact, since you have a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee who has some oversight uh, over the Biden foreign policy, uh, here's your chance to let Congress know what are the, the realistic expectations of, of Greece in the short term. Well, um, we would like to invest, we will, not, we will not be asking, when meeting with our U.S. counterparts, uh, in the new administration, we'll not be asking for any favors, for any preferential treatment. We'll be talking about common interests. Uh, and I think there are a lot of them. So we'll be investing in promoting those interests, in convincing our counterparts in the U.S., but also in other countries, that there is a common agenda uh, which is based on, on stability and keeping spoilers away from this uh, you know, troubled region, the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, and I think there are a number of U.S. Uh, allies in this region who are working along the same uh, lines. So I think we can make a convincing case that U.S. interests will be better served uh, if the U.S. supports uh, Greece and other allies in the Eastern Med. Now, having said that, um, you know, uh, Turkey bashing is, you know, it's easy nowadays because Turkey has provided so many, uh, so much ammunition uh, to, to its critics. But I think one has to be a bit more con constructive than that. I mean, uh, Turkey has to realize that there is a cost uh, for its aggressive behavior. At the same time, what Greece has been saying, and, and the Minister uh, of National Defense mentioned that, we have a dual track approach. Of course, when pushed by Turkey, we will push back. Uh, and in, in, in more than one way, diplomatically, militarily by building regional and other alliances there's also a positive agenda there uh, so the, the u.s could play an important role in convincing uh, the, the, the turkish leadership 
that it's much better for their own interest as well, for Turkey's interest, if they choose the positive agenda instead of that aggressive and destabilizing behavior in a number of fronts. Um, I think the new administration can make a convincing case, uh, much more than the outgoing one. Congresswoman, we, we just finished up a pretty divisive election season, uh, more divisive even than, than 2000. You have a smaller majority than you've dealt with in the, the last two years. Uh, we still don't know the, the outcome of the Senate. You have a new House Foreign Affairs chairman. Uh, you, you went through these great achievements in the 116th Congress, and as you noted, they were all bipartisan. Is that type of bipartisan achievement going to be harder to achieve uh, in, the next, in the next couple of years at least? And what should we be looking for in, in January that, that maybe influences Greece's approach to, to the Congress? I don't think it's going to be harder. I think it may be easier for for several reasons. Uh, in the Foreign Affairs Committee, we tend to be nonpartisan on most issues. Uh, under Trump, it's gotten a little more contentious, but you know they like to say that partisan politics stop at the water's edge. So the issues that we that I discussed were all bipartisan and dealing with Cyprus, dealing with Turkey, dealing with Greece. So I think that will continue in the House. The fact that the Senate it will be close, whichever way it goes, will mean they'll have to cooperate. And you've got Menendez there who will certainly be leading that and Van Hollen. So for those reasons, I think it'll be easier. Also, Trump is gone. He was a very uh, destabilizing force and a threatening force. And without him personally there, I think you'll see some Republicans move back towards some of our more traditional ways of supporting diplomacy um, abroad. And third, having Joe Biden there with his experience both internationally and dealing with Congress, I think will help to lead our agenda forward. I can tell you that people have gotten tired of Turkey. They, either side of the aisle, they now see Turkey as a very non-dependable ally. Uh, talk about destabilizing. Certainly they have done that throughout the region, uh, not just in its relations with Greece. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, there was some reservation, I think, about Mr. Meeks as the new chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee because of some of his statements in the past about Turkey. But he has certainly come around and is no friend of Turkey's now either. So I don't think you'll have a problem within uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee pushing a pro-Greek uh, agenda. We've got to get more engaged in the world. The U.S. has just pulled back. We've pulled back our alliances, our uh, memberships and organizations. We've abandoned our longtime friends uh, throughout Europe, and everything has been one deal or another against some of the worst players on the planet. Joe Biden will correct that. He will not do diplomatic relations in that way. He will renew our friendships with our allies. And we, if we don't, we will leave a power vacuum that Russia will step into politically. And you already see what they're doing around the edges of uh, their territory, what used to be within their sphere of influence. They're moving back there. And China will do economically. You see the Belt and Road Initiative they're investing in infrastructure from Mongolia to Peru, and certainly Greece falls within that path. So if the U.S. doesn't step up, we are ceding ground to those two forces, and it's a big mistake. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you both for joining. Mr. Dokos, I look forward to follow-ups. You've done a great service with the Atlas, you and Mr. Sirigos. Uh, since Washington has had to deal with false maps and false material that Turkey's been putting out, having that is a, a, a tremendous pushback. Uh, look forward to a new chapter starting in January and look forward to your leadership again, Congresswoman Titus. And I turn over to Simeon, who once again has done a phenomenal job. Uh, bravo to the Delphi Forum and to Simeon Somokos. Thank you. Thank you.